All right, guys, went back today with a very impressive 1911 made by Gerson, imported by EAA, chambered in 10 millimeter. This is a brand new offering available online, and the MSRP on this guy is right at about $800. And if you understand right now, a lot of those MSRPs are going to be a little bit more than the street price. This makes this one heck of a deal for a 10 millimeter, especially with the build quality, the accessories, and the features. I want to open up with that because a lot of times when people think high-end 1911s, they are thinking two and three thousand dollars. But this truly is competing with some of those more expensive ones I've shot. Now, this is actually the only, uh, only the second 10 millimeter I've ever owned. I've shot a lot more though at YouTube events, industry events, and different friends' guns, and this by far is the smoothest shooting 10 millimeter. Now, EAA did send this out to the channel for us to try, and honestly, when I first picked it up I said man here goes my hands and my wrists because I'm going to be dumping a lot of 10 millimeter through it to prove it out after the first shots my opinion completely changed I don't know what they're doing maybe it's the weight maybe it's the way the recoil system works but this does not have the recoil that even some of my 45 ACP 1911s do I found this more pleasurable to shoot down at the range than a lot of other 45 ACP 1911s. So in a nutshell, if you're used to shooting a 45 ACP and you're used to that recoil impulse and the feel of that style 1911, this 10 millimeter is actually gonna shoot a little bit softer and smoother, but I was shooting off the shelf, Federal and a few other companies, just basic 10 millimeter. It wasn't a slouch, but it definitely wasn't Underwood or something like that. But that makes me feel really confident that this could take the hotter stuff, survive, and do very well. Now, initially, I haven't run any of that hotter ammo first. Again, I, I want to make that clear for this part of the review. This is a first shots and overview video where we talk about the specs and features and its performance down at the range. I did run a lot of rounds through it, though, but it was all that kind of basic um, bulk pack 10 millimeter full metal jacket ammo that you would buy at your local gun shop or online. I will try to get some specialty hot loads for this, but it's not honestly a top priority for me. Really just getting good defensive ammo and ball ammo through this gun is what I would traditionally run through a gun like this. Now something like this has a few different options. It's actually the more compact version. Um, so it allows it to be carried maybe outside the waistband or even inside the waistband if you dare with a kind of bulkier jacket. This definitely does come in at a pretty hefty weight of 2.35 pounds, so it's not a light, lightweight gun by any means. In the box itself, you get your lock, your cleaning brush, one magazine, and the firearm. And honestly, I would like to see more magazines come with this handgun. Now, there are definitely different magazine options out there for this 10 millimeter 1911, and... Uh, you could just grab pretty much as many as you wanted. So maybe they're trying to keep the cost down by only including one, but I always like to see companies include two, but enough talking about that. Let's talk about the specs and features, starting from the grip module all the way up to the muzzle. And the first thing I wanna mention are the grips are absolutely spectacular. They feel very nice in your hands. They've got a really cool Gerson logo on them and they just fit comfortably uh, for a wide variety of hand sizes. They're not too thick and they're not too thin and you can always swap these out for whatever you want. The next thing I wanna mention is that grip safety and texturing on the back strap. It's got a diamond pattern texturing on the back strap and the grip safety actuates very nicely and it definitely has an enhanced beaver tail to protect your hands from slide bite. You can get a good high hold on this handgun and it feels incredibly comfortable. You're going to actuate the grip safety every time because it has this extended part down here with a little texturing and when it's all the way pressed down, it almost sits flush with the back strap. So it's very comfortable down at the range and it doesn't bulge out to dig into your hands. That's one thing I really want to hyper focus on because 10 millimeter is no slouch and it definitely has a lot more felt recoil than other calibers um, in a small handgun and this one mitigates the recoil well and all the sharp edges are rounded down smoothed out and the edges are chamfered almost everywhere you can see allowing it to not tear up your hands while shooting it down at the range making it very enjoyable 
mag after mag after mag. After that initial range trip, I didn't feel like my wrists were worn out or my hands were worn out. I could just keep shooting this handgun with or without gloves, no issues whatsoever. Kind of moving up to this extended safety, this thing is absolutely awesome. I'll show you guys that it's clear and we will uh, kind of show you that safety in action. So it flips up and on very nicely. It's audible and tactile, and there's no sponge or play. It just goes right into a detent. I do love that it's got a little bit of texturing. On this one, sometimes on a 1911, I will ride up over the safety and get a very tall hold on it. For this one, I did put my thumb beside it because Honestly, I just wanted to get a good solid grip on this 10 mil, but you could run it either way with your thumb over the safety or not. Again, it's an ambidextrous safety, so you can flip it on from both sides, and both sides work incredibly well. Kind of moving up to the other controls of the firearm, you do have that slide release or slide stop. It's got a nice scoop cut to it, as, very, as well as some very nice diamond-plated texturing, and it works out incredibly well. Now, this grip is definitely going to be a little bit larger than other 1911s I've felt, but it does feel comfortable in my hands, uh, but it's really difficult for me to wrap my thumb around and hit that mag release. I do have to break my grip and drop the mag that way. When I do drop the mag, it comes out free, it drops free, and this feels like a very good quality magazine. And this is nine plus one rounds of 10 millimeters. So 10 rounds at 10 mil, that is no slouch especially for its kind of 1911-ish traditional design. The trigger itself is a bowed or curved trigger with a skeletonized feel to it. It works out very nicely. Again, make sure it's clear one more time. And the trigger on this guy is very traditional 1911, but improved a little bit. It's got a smooth take up, it hits a wall, and a very crisp break. The reset on this guy is also very positive, audible, and tactile. It hits a defined wall, and then you don't have any creep after that, and it's got a very good break. The hammer itself is skeletonized with texturing on the back if you wanted to decock it, um, but I like to carry this guy either without one in the chamber if it's just a range day or for personal defense, uh, cocked and locked with that safety. It does a good job. You're not gonna accidentally bump it off. It locks in that detent good, but what you need to use it, flip it off, pull the trigger, you are good to go. Up at the front, it does have that 1913 pick rail, and it does a very good job. This is going to get a light for sure, because what better way to test a lot of pistol lights than to throw them on a 10 millimeter with some hotter ammo, so this is gonna be seeing a lot more time on the channel. I also love that it kind of stops short of the end of the barrel, and it's got very aggressive, but very elegant looks to it. They have a few different colorways available on their website, including one with a compensator, and you can find all more detailed information on their website as well. It does have slide serrations on the back and front, and it makes the operation of the gun very easy. Now, even though this is a 10 millimeter, it's very easy to chamber around. Uh, feels again like more of the 45 ACP, nothing too crazy there. The sights that this come with is a fully adjustable for elevation on the rear. It's blacked out. Does have some very fine lines to it for anti-glare serrations. And then it's got a very nice fiber front sight. So you can pick that up incredibly well as you can see in the intro. It was 100% reliable with all the bulk pack ball ammunition I put through it. Again, this is gonna have to have more testing and evaluation with some of the hotter loads. 10 millimeter is not the easiest ammo to grab. So I had whatever I had on hand, and then I picked a little bit up from Beltway Gun and Pawn. Beltway Gun and Pawn in Matthews, North Carolina also did the transfer for me on this. So huge shout out to these guys for always supporting the channel. And in fact, if you head to Beltway Gun and Pawn and you tell them 704 Tactical sent you over, you'll get 10% off anything in their shop. So something to consider. And these guys had 10 mil in stock, so that was pretty awesome. In summary, 100% reliable, again with the limited ammo selection that I had, but it worked out great. The accuracy was on point. It was definitely a tack driver. The recoil management was incredibly impressive for a 10 millimeter, and it was very ergonomic. Honestly, I went into this review, and I'm reviewing this gun for you guys. I I went in not like super excited about a 10 mil 1911. I don't review a ton of 1911s on the channel and I definitely don't review a lot of 10 mils. It's just not my style. So for me personally, I would have taken a look at this gun, said, oh, that's cool, and then moved on and kind of ignored it. 
But after shooting it, my opinions have completely changed. This 10mm 1911 is going to be staying in the collection for a very long time and is probably going to become a staple of the channel for different light testing depending on the availability of 10mm ammo. This has drastically changed my concept and idea of a 10 mil, and I could find this having places in my arsenal for not just light testing or YouTube testing. I feel like this could really transform the way I view a 1911 or a 10 mil for different applications, such as maybe personal defense, hunting applications, or just having fun down at the range. This really has opened up my eyes to the 10 mil cartridge. So either either a lot of guys are saying, yeah, duh, this, this has been a great cartridge for a long time. I don't, why are you so late to the game? Or a lot of guys may be still skeptical. I think if you have the opportunity to shoot it or get this for a great deal, it is an absolutely awesome option to add to your collection, even if you're not necessarily a 10 millimeter 1911 guy. Thanks for watching. And again, thanks to EAA for sending this out to the channel. All that information will be available on their website. Have a good one.